In this video, I'm going to explain how capital gains tax works for new investors of listed shares and ETFs. I will also show you a free online tool that I use to calculate capital gains tax automatically so you can know in advance how much tax you can expect to pay even if you haven't sold yet. So make sure you watch the end of the video as I reveal one of my best tips to help you save money on taxes. Capital gains tax or CGT is the Australian tax you pay on profits from selling assets such as ETFs, shares, crypto and property and many other types of investments. Only a few assets are exempt from capital gains tax in Australia and the biggest exemption is your main residence if you own one. Otherwise, most investors who have made a profit have to pay capital gains tax at some point in time. How much capital gains tax do you pay depends on how well you have kept track of your portfolio and the costs you incur. Investors must report all gains and capital losses in their Australian income tax return and pay tax on their capital gains. Although it is referred to as a capital gains tax, it is part of your income tax. It is not actually a separate tax. So if you have a capital gain, it will increase the tax you need to pay after lodging your annual income tax return. However, if you have a capital loss, you can only reduce other capital gains and not other income like your salary or wages. Instead, capital losses that are unused against capital gains in one tax year can only be carried forward to future years to be offset against future capital gains. For individual taxpayers that sell shares at a profit, the capital gains tax rate depends on which individual marginal tax bracket that you fall into in the year you sold the asset when you add all your income together from all sources. For example, if you earn $44,990 from your day job and you make a $10,000 net capital gain from selling an investment, then your capital gain will be taxed mostly at the a 32.5% marginal tax rate. This is because your total taxable income will be $54,999, which is $44,999 plus the $10,000 capital gain, which is above the $45,000 tax bracket, which applies in 2022, which attracts the 32.5% tax rate. If you have earned more income, then you could pay even more capital gains tax at a higher marginal tax rate. Importantly, unlike salary and wages, nobody's withholding tax from the amount that you receive from the sale of your assets like your employer does on your salary and wage. So you are responsible for paying the tax to the ATO. This catches many people off guard as many taxpayers don't keep money aside to pay the tax bill that comes after their tax return is lodged. It is best to work out how much tax you will owe when you sell and set aside funds from that sale to cover the extra tax bill when it falls due. When is capital gains tax payable? As capital gains are declared in your tax return, you will be issued a tax assessment within 21 days of lodging your tax return for the year that you sold the investment. This is also referred to as a tax bill. If you lodge your tax return on MyGov by yourself, then you need to pay the capital gains tax by 21 days after your due date, which is normally 31 October after the tax year ended on 30 June of the relevant year. If you lodge your tax return with a registered tax agent, then you should get an extension to pay this tax up to the 15th of May of the following year which is an extra seven months than if you lodge your own tax return yourself on MyGov. This extra time to pay capital gains tax is a great advantage of using a registered tax agent to prepare and lodge your tax return, even if you are confident with calculating the capital gains tax yourself. How do you calculate capital gains tax? Before I show you how, please let me know if you're finding this video helpful by hitting the like button. And if you wanna see more, remember you can always subscribe to get notified when I upload a new video. Step one. Work out what you receive for the asset. This is your capital proceeds. It is what you receive when you sell the asset. For example, if I sold 100 Woolworth shares at $36.40 per share on the 23rd of June, 2022, then my capital proceeds would be $3,640. Step two, work out your cost for the asset. Your cost base is what it costs you to acquire the asset, plus any other costs you had to acquire it, hold it and dispose of the asset. So if I bought 50 shares in Woolworths 20 years ago for $12.03 per share, then I would have paid $601.50. Also, in the case of my Woolworths shares, I also paid $20 of brokerage costs to buy the shares initially 20 years ago and another $10 in brokerage to sell them now. I would add these brokerage costs to my cost base. Also, as I participated in the Woolworths Dividend Reinvestment Plan, or DRP, for over 20 years, I acquired another 50 shares in this time at very varying prices, which I totaled to have cost me another $1,005.21. This amount would also be added to my cost base. 
my total cost base would be $1,636.71. Now there is an important thing to watch out with calculating the cost base, and that is not to rely on your online broker's cost base report. This is a trick for new investors. If you're using your broker's online report, then you need to remember that they will always ignore DRPs and other transactions like mergers and divestments. For example, if I use my broker's record of cost on my Woolworth shares, you can see here it only recognized the initial purchase price from 20 years ago of $601.50. It ignored the brokerage costs and DRP purchases, which is wrong and will lead to higher capital gains tax. Step 3. Subtract the purchase costs from what you received from the proceeds of the sale. If the result is more than zero, you have a capital gain for the sale of this asset. If it's less than zero, you have a capital loss for this asset. In my case with the Woolworths example, I have a gross capital gain of $2,003.29. If I just used my broker's account, my capital gain would have been much higher at $3,038.50, which means more capital gains tax, as my gain is higher than what it would have been if I had have included the cost of the DRP and the acquisitions from the DRP. Step four. If you had sold other investments this year, then you would need to repeat steps one to three for each CGT event you have had this financial year. In my example, I'll assume I haven't, so I'll move on. Step five, subtract your capital losses from your capital gains. If you have no allowable capital losses, then there's nothing to subtract. If you have a net capital loss carried forward from previous years, you should subtract this now. Step six, if the remaining amount is more than zero, then you have made a gross capital gain. Step 7. If you are an individual taxpayer and an Australian resident for tax purposes and you have owned the asset you sold for more than 12 months then you are eligible to apply the CGT discount of 50% to any remaining capital gains. In my example I will select a capital gains discount of 50% as I am an individual and Australian resident for tax purposes. After applying the CGT discount of 50% or the discount that applies to you you have calculated the net capital gain. In the example, the net capital gain after applying the 50% capital gains discount is $1,001.65. A net capital gain needs to be reported in your income tax return and tax will be paid as I mentioned earlier. When calculating capital gains tax for listed investments like shares, EFTs and crypto, you can make your life a lot easier and automate the tracking of the cost base in real time and calculate an accurate return on investment using free online tools. I have been using a free online tool called ShareSite for the last four years. I use the free plan that allows me to track up to 10 investments at no charge. This video is not sponsored by ShareSite, but I do get asked all the time what do I use to track my shares and calculate capital gains tax accurately. I don't use my broker online tools or the free reports that they provide as they are not accurate as I described above since they miss DRPs and many other events over an investment's life cycle. ShareSite tracks DRPs, mergers, demergers, splits and all other types of transactions accurately and in real time. So I think it's a great tool. I'll include a link in the description of this video for ShareSite. For full disclosure, this video is not sponsored by ShareSite, but the link is an affiliate link and I may receive a small bonus if you did choose to eventually upgrade to one of the more advanced plans. Oh, and if you did choose to upgrade, then by using this link, you would also get a discount of four months free on your first 12 months if you eventually did decide to upgrade from the free plan. The video on the screen right now will show you an example of how I calculated capital gains tax on shares I owned for more than 20 years using ShareSite to do the hard work for me, and also how I overcame the challenge of losing some record to ensure my cost base was calculated correctly and I avoided paying too much capital gains tax. See you in the next one.